Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to do an overview of these two things here. Now these are the new FPV transmitter, the Tramp HV from Immersion RC and also the race wand from Immersion RC that you can use to configure it as well. Now we've ordered these from Hobby King. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and have a look at them. And what we'll do in this video is, first of all, let's take them out of the box and have a look at what they are and how they actually work. Talk a little bit about the specs. And then I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about the three ways that you can actually set up this little video transmitter because you can set it up using the button, set it up using the magic wand if you've got one, or you can set it up using the on-screen display in something like Betaflight. But other implementations of the flight family like CleanFlight and iNav are working to get support for this built in so that you can just set it up directly from your OSD. Now if we look at this little guy, the first thing that strikes you when you open the box is how unbelievably small this thing is. I'll just take this out of here. The Tramp HV itself, each of these are centimetre squares. You kind of get an idea of how small the actual device is. And the only two connections on here are this board, which is like a little radio frequency board that works with the wand. And you have an SMA style connector on the other side as well held in with a little snap and there's that little button at the side that you can use to program it all included in the box if you pull it out then you have a little thing about accessing the immersion rc bits and pieces on places like facebook you get a couple of stickers you can never have too many stickers and then you get some other pieces as well now, the two cables are actually for slightly different things. There's a little bit sticky here, double-sided foam, so you can actually mount this thing to your craft. But let's talk about these two cables. The first one is very similar to the kind of cables that you've seen on the older style Immersion RC transmitters. So we have a JST style connector for the power, and we have a little connector that goes straight into the back of a camera. And that just clips into the spare slot on the side of the device itself. And you pop that in and there's your connection for your camera and your connection for your power. So that's very, very straightforward. In fact, that's a very similar setup to what we used to have with the old style of Immersion RC transmitters. I'll just put that out of the way. So you can see here, that you had pretty much the same thing. You had one cable that was for power and you had the other cable that went into the camera. But hopefully you can see uh, the new one is quite a little bit smaller. The other cable is a little bit more interesting. The other cable has a wire for each of the connections. And by plugging that in, you can then wire this up to your own model. But it does include an extra cable here. So, Let's just go on to the specification page, talk a little bit about the specs, and then come back and we'll talk about how the configuration on this little guy actually works. So one of the amazing things about this is that it will support from one milliwatt up to a whacking 600 milliwatts. Now the one milliwatt is there for something called pit mode, and that allows this to fire up in the pits if you're going to be using it for something like FPV racing without completely destroying somebody else's signal who's already flying on that band and frequency. It is actually, if I can get this up to the camera, come on camera, uh, you see all the electronics are actually under this little metal can. And they've done an awful lot of work trying to make sure that the radio frequency interference from this little guy doesn't get anywhere it shouldn't. It's also quite clever and it has a lot of thermal protection in here as well. And as this thing gets heated up, and you typically find that when you're running a model on the bench without any airflow over something like your video transmitter, it gets quite warm. Uh, usually in flight, the air that's flowing around it as you're zipping up and down the field keeps the video transmitter nice and cool. With this little guy, it's actually monitoring its internal temperature. And if it starts to overheat, then it'll automatically start to reduce the power consumption and output just to make sure that it doesn't cook itself, which is a really cute idea. It does support all 40 channels 
and the power supply that goes into it if you're using the other cable, well, using both cables actually, but this one's easy because it's got a little GST connector. At the moment, the ones that have been shipping, like this one that we've got here, is from two to, I think, four S capable. And as you can see on the specs, it's actually going to be six S capable when they start shipping these things from March. So hopefully if you're gonna get one from now on, then you're gonna get the latest and greatest version. So let me zoom back out a little bit and let's talk about how you can actually configure this little guy. So before we do anything, I'm gonna make sure that we have an antenna installed. You should never power up a video transmitter without an antenna installed, otherwise bad things will happen. So let's talk about the three, three different ways that you can actually configure this little guy. The first is using the button at the side. Now this little button at the side that we've already had a quick look at, uh, you press it for three seconds and it takes you through the different settings from the frequency to the band and eventually to the power as well. And you can use that just like you would with lots of other little video transmitters that we've already seen on the channel. And all of that is covered in the manual. Using the wand, you can actually configure everything as well. And you can also have a look at the settings without it actually powered on. Because by using this, this will not only send and receive information to the Tramp HV, it'll also provide enough power so that you can actually see what's happening. So let's have a look at the wand. So the race wand itself, there are several versions of this. This is kind of the, uh, the one for private use. Um, again, you get the same two bits and stickers and whatnot. Bit of foam. Actually, this is exactly the kind of foam that we talk about covering your barometer on your flight controllers. So don't throw that away. That's going to come in really handy. And then you actually have the wand itself. And that's all that's in the box. Now, the wand actually runs on two AAA batteries. So you're going to have to pop those in the back. And when you power it on, press the power button. Then it will power up and you have all the different settings. Now, it does have a USB port here at the side, so uh, I'm guessing there are updates and things available that you can do. And uh, let me zoom in a little bit, and I'll show you the menu. So the menu on this thing is fly, setup, and status, and power off. Those are the four things that you can do. So first of all, if we select fly, then we can set the frequency, or start a heat, or get the frequency. So here, the set frequency, we can change the channel and band that we want to use. So uh, by going up and down, we can actually change the power. So we can go from 25 milliwatts to 200 to 350 to the maximum of 600 milliwatts. Or if we go left and right, we can actually start changing the band and frequency. If we go and select start heat, this is where you can set up the number of pilots, the race and everything else that you want and go along and if you're all using the little Tramp HV you can then go along and this will automatically set each pilot one after the other to give you the best possible spacing and bits and pieces. So for here uh, pilot one would actually be 5.658 gigahertz 25 milliwatt setting. So there's all the different pilots and you can just go through and use this to actually program each of them in turn which is a nice feature. Next one then is get frequency. And this is the kind of cool part here. Now I haven't got my little Tramp HV powered up. It's not connected to anything. This is the little board that you would mount externally to your craft. You want it in a place where you or the marshal can get to it quite easily. And we're gonna get the current frequency. I'm just gonna place the wand over the board, press the button, it says success. And we can see that mine is set to IRC channel one, which is what most of my stuff is set to, at 25 milliwatts. Next thing you can do is set up, and then you can configure the heat. So you can set the number of pilots and the pilot frequencies, that's all in there. And then you can also do the status, where you can do things like check the communication. So next thing we'll do then, is we'll try and get the transmitter version. So we'll put that over there. Press the button. So the TX version we're running here is 1.26, the international version. Last way to set this up is one of the really funky ways, and that's actually using Betaflight itself. 
Now this is all documented in the beta flight manual and it talks about it in quite some depth. There is the option now, if your tramp firmware is 1.26 or higher, that you can wire up the wire that comes from the T connection here on this multi-port. So you probably wouldn't use this cable for this. What you'd actually do is get the other cable that comes in the kit or add an extra little wire to the other loom. And the wire that you want is actually this white one here. And what you do is you connect this wire that's coming from the T or telemetry pin into the transmit pin of one of your spare UARTs on your Beta Flight flight controller. Once you've done that, then you can go into the ports tab and for that UART that you've got everything connected to, then you select the peripherals as the IRC tramp. Once you've done that, then you can go into the on-screen display just like you would with anything else and you can actually configure the power, the frequency, the settings and you can also set it into things like pit mode as well to make sure that if you're in a situation where you are in the pits that you can uh, power up your quad on that one milliwatt setting and it isn't going to blow anyone else's FPV signal out the water. So here, just to show you how that is actually all put together, here's just a very quick diagram of how you do that. So here's the Tramp HV with a little radio thing at the top, the camera's installed, the power's there, and what you do is just install that white wire that we looked at that's coming from the T connection on the Tramp HV into the transmit pin of a spare UART on your flight controller and follow those instructions in beta flight. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in this and have been looking at it. It's actually a really nice video transmitter. We have been playing with it and we are potentially going to order a couple more. I've always liked the Immersion RC stuff. We have it on loads and loads of craft here and it works very, very well. It's pretty bulletproof. But this ability to set the band and frequency and ability to integrate it into things like Beta Flight and potentially Clean Flight and iNav soon as well is a real boon. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organised set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.